we have quite a bit to talk about today regarding the Philadelphia 76ers, specifically regarding Ben Simmons and Markel Fultz. As despite Ben Simmons running Rookie of the Year and Fultz having a rookie year that I'm sure he would love to forget about, the two of them actually did have one major thing in common last season. Neither one of them could shoot the ball to save their life. And of course, Fultz couldn't shoot because he mysteriously just completely forgot how to shoot somehow last year. And then Simmons, on the other hand, just refused to shoot. He could be wide open and the thought of shooting the ball wouldn't even cross his mind. So this summer, we thought both those guys were going to be working on those things, that they were both going to be learning how to shoot. And they have. As Brett Brown, head coach of the Philadelphia 76ers, just confirmed this yesterday, which seems like great news. But at the same time, he also didn't sound too confident in either one of their abilities to be able to shoot consistently just yet. First up, when he was talking about Markel Fultz, Brown said that he has been putting in a tremendous amount of work to get his jump shot back this summer, working with his trainer Drew Hanlon and attempting over 150,000 jumpers in total, which means he has been taking over a thousand jumpers a day, maybe close to like 1,500 a day, which is of course great. And as for Simmons, he has worked with Drew Hanlon's brother on shooting threes and mid-range jumpers from the L so there's that and like I said that sounds great at first and if Brett Brown were to just leave it at that you'd probably be really excited about Ben Simmons and Markel Fultz and the progress they have made you'd think that they'd be able to shoot by now but Brett Brown didn't quite leave it at just that as he also went on to say a, a lot more and he started off by saying this about Ben Simmons his jump shots not going to find him at some point it sure will help but I have aspirations and ambitions for him where I want him to feature on an all defensive team. I personally want to post him more. I look forward to using him as a screener and giving Markel the ball and let him roll off of it. That Blake Griffin sort of half roll and go to dunk. Then saying that if anything, he'd prefer Ben Simmons become a better free throw shooter this year as opposed to a better three point shooter this year. Imagine if he can score one more point, it translates to like three to five more wins. When I look at how you're going to do that, there's one way that interests me. Let's just get him more free throws. Can you finish? Can you be a better free throw shooter than you were in the regular season? He has to be. And then he started talking about Markel Fultz. And Brett Brown did say that he has some of that confidence and swagger back, but at the same time, his jumper isn't consistent yet. When I see him now come back into our gym, you look at his swagger, his cocky side, his mojo. He's seeking shots. He's really not bashful. When I look at his actual form, there are times from a posture standpoint that he has it a little bit backward. When you look at him rising up or getting to the ball in his shot pocket, sometimes his head will go back and he'll play more into a fade type fundamental and we want to try and correct that. And lastly, Brett Brown did say that there are going to be times in the upcoming season where Markel Fultz and Ben Simmons share the court together and that it probably won't be very pretty at first since there are going to be some growing pains. All right, and here's what I think about this real quick. I completely agree with Brett Brown about the part where Ben Simmons needs to become a better free throw shooter and that could possibly help the six more than if he was a decent three point shooter right now because Ben Simmons only shot 56% from the free throw line last season. That's freaking unacceptable that's terrible he has to do better than that and if he becomes a 70 to 75 percent shooting from the line i think that's gonna help the Sixers more in the long run if he can hit an open three every now and then and as for a fault this was one of the only real updates that we had gotten on the summer other than drew hanlon saying that he has his shot back and could be an all-star this upcoming season and that report from hanlon and this one from brett brown didn't really match up but i guess some coaches typically just downplay how excited they are about the progress their players have made and are always going to try and stress that they can improve even more while trainers on the other hand like to claim that the players that they have been training are the best thing ever and that they've made so much progress because that's going to make the trainer look even better so maybe what we have to do here is just split the difference and assume that this means that Fultz can play again and maybe he's not going to be an all-star this year like Drew Hanlon said he would be but the fact that Brett Brown admitted that Fultz will be getting playing time especially alongside Ben Simmons this year must mean that he has a lot more confidence in Markel Fultz now and just thinking about this logically it's unreasonable to expect that over the summer, Ben Simmons went from not being able to shoot at all to becoming a knockdown shooter, and that Fultz went from forgetting completely how to shoot and to play basketball to becoming an all-star caliber player. All right, I don't know what to make 
of all of this like this might be some of the craziest news that i have heard in quite a while i find it really hard to believe but then again i found things in the past that have happened really hard to believe and if you had told me that they would have happened in the past before they happened i wouldn't have believed you but of course they have all happened so this could be one of those things anyways from the sound of things the warriors are about to become the lakers or the lakers are about to become the warriors however you want to look at it and there are a couple of reports here that i need you guys to hear so you can understand why i'm having such a hard time believing this all right so first off clay thompson's father michael thompson former nba player who won a couple of rings with the lakers and who has said before that his son is happy in golden state and is never going to leave the Warriors just had a complete change of heart as he just said recently that now he thinks the best move for his son is to go to the Lakers and play with LeBron James as when he was talking about whether or not his son would mind playing behind LeBron in LeBron's shadow this is what he had to say you're talking about guys for whom pecking order becomes really important. The perception of how people are going to look at you is important for these guys. If Clay came to LA, which he should, then he's going to have to slide in behind LeBron, but it's fine because he's done it before it's not a big deal and that right there blew my mind and i had to reread it over and over and over and over again just to make sure that he actually said what he just said when he said that he thinks clay thompson should go to la and not only that i had to fact check this and make sure this was actually the father of clay thompson talking which it was and that what he was saying wasn't taken out of context which it wasn't he actually said this and needless to say the thought of clay thompson leaving the warriors for the lakers would cause a massive power shift in the nba but that's not even as crazy as it gets as we also got reports out yesterday saying that kevin durant will join the lakers next year and this comes from a source who claims to have inside knowledge of the situation and he's been linking it to a journalist who has appeared on pretty much every big sports network before and let me just read you guys what this reporter claims his source has been saying spoke to a source today who confirmed kevin durant will be on the lakers next year just like lebron planned his move to la a year or more earlier katie is doing the same right now they want to form the best duo in the nba and set katie up to be the face of the lakers post lebron also from my source lebron katie and kuzma were all together yesterday at a filming in downtown la katie and lebron's crew were there katie will be a laker next summer book it then the reporter himself gave his thoughts on the matter by saying i'm not confirming anything but the sources seemed adamant i downgrade and say that he's highly considering it best long season ahead and lots of things could happen between now and then like i said this story is just insane the thought of kevin durant and lebron james joining forces on the lakers in and of itself is enough to shatter the NBA. Not to mention if they were to get Klay Thompson as well after that. I mean, I'm not even sure if, if anyone in the league would ever be able to compete with that. But then again, assuming they keep Lonzo and Ingram through all of this, what would that starting five even look like? Lonzo, Thompson, Ingram, LeBron, and KD at center? I mean, he is seven feet tall. He might not have the frame of a center but then again he is one of the best defenders and rim protectors in the nba he proved that last season so maybe he could pull it off but offensively that team is just unfair like that team would literally be unfair how would you possibly defend that ad to boston would be the last hope the nba could possibly have and having a, a, a good finals matchup because then at least you have kyrie brown hayward tatum and AD versus Lonzo, Thompson, Ingram, LeBron, and KD, AKA the Eastern Conference All-Stars versus the Western Conference All-Stars. As for the rest of the league, you know, that's tough. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. Do you actually think 
that Kevin Durant would consider joining LeBron James on the Lakers and if so if Klay Thompson goes there what's next for the NBA how could you possibly form a super team that's better than that let me know your opinions down in the comment section below but that is gonna do it for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed if you did go ahead and smack the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA thank you once again for watching though you guys already know that you are the real MVPs and until next time I am out of here